Well, today we're going to be looking at the rookie cards of prime time, also known as Neon Dion, or more recently known as Coach Prime. You ready? Then let's do this. Now, with the fifth overall pick of the first round of the 1989 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons selected Deion Sanders from Florida State University. But wait, there's more. Also, selected in the 30th round of the 1988 MLB June Amateur Draft, the New York Yankees selected, you guessed it, Deion Sanders, a dual sport athlete that dazzled us for many years. Hello and welcome, Rookie Card Collecting friends. Victor, the Rookie Card Specialist here. Thanks for tuning in. Well, a more recent hobby resurgence is focusing on the rookie cards of Deion Sanders. And according to my research, Deion Sanders has three NFL rookie cards and a total of four MLB rookie cards. Let's get right into it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. We're looking at the cards that were produced of Deion Sanders in 1989. And according to my research, and, and if you find something different, please let me know. But these are the only three cards that were created of Dion in 1989. There were, I couldn't find anything prior to 1989. And in 1989, he was included in these three sets. All three of these sets qualify as true rookie cards because they fully comply with the the guidelines that were established by the hobby back then so they fall into full compliance and each of these is a true rookie card now which one is subjective whichever one you prefer but all three are 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 labeled as true rookie cards i'm also going to be giving you some pop reports and the pop reports that I'm going to be showing you are basically PSA 10s because I figured, you know, it's stuff from the 80s and 90s. It, you know, it, it's the the cards of the rookie card era and they are mass produced. They're plentiful. And there's a big difference between a nine and a 10. So for the sake of uh, just keeping it simple, for the sake of keeping it short, we're going to be looking at PSA 10 uh, pop reports. And I'm also going to give you the total amount of cards graded. So let's get started. For the 1989 Pro Set, which according to my research, it seems like this card is the least um, popular. I don't know why. Maybe it's uh, just the Pro Set brand. Uh, it could be because he's featured in his Florida State uniform. Um, but for whatever reason... This card seems to be the least favorite out of the three. So if you had to rank them, right, you, you would probably rank this one third, uh, at least for the majority of hobbyists. So uh, the pop report on the pro set is total pop, 3,545 cards, and 1,114 of them are in PSA 10 format. On the 89 tops traded, this one I really like because... Dion was really known uh, throughout his career for being a good punt returner. I mean, he has quite a bit of uh, punt returns in his career. He, he, that's, it's kind of like his bread and butter, per se. It's kind of where he really razzled and dazzled uh, the cameras. But in this aspect, you know, the 89 tops, is, 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 it's, it's a respected card. I like it for that reason because it looks like he's getting ready to receive a punt, right? Like he's just waiting for it to come down so he can take off. So it really fits his personality. The PSA pop report for the 89 tops traded football is 9,358 total cards have been graded by PSA and a total of 3,121 of those have been given a PSA 10. The 89 score, which is perhaps his most desired rookie card by um, the majority. Let's just call it that. I'm, I'm comfortable saying that. You know, it features him in a portrait image, basically in his Atlanta Falcons uh, uniform. And nice card, especially the set. The set was a very, uh, considered a very high quality set in 1989. This was, you know, top line as far as quality, 
as far as uh, uh, just the structure of the set, very beloved set by the hobby in, in, in 1989. And that one has 8,742 total grades, but only 904 of those are PSA 10s. So that's interesting. As we move into 1990, there's plenty of other cards produced of Deion Sanders. There's plenty to choose from. Out of all the ones that I looked at, I really hold this 1990 Topps Tiffany in high regard. I respect it for what it is and for the rarity of it. But as we look at the card, we can be confused or mistaken as we see Topps Super Rookie um, as part of the element design on the card. And that can be misleading. That doesn't mean that this is a rookie card, folks. And it's, it's a second year card right? And in those instances, I, I identify these as post-rookie theme. There is a theme in the design element that makes you think it's a rookie card, but in actuality, it isn't. But it's still a very respectable second-year card of Deion Sanders. Population report for this one is only 117 cards have been graded, and 42 of them are PSA 10s. Let's move on to his baseball rookie cards. Now these four cards I have identified as Deion Sanders true rookie cards. Now the 89 Donruss, the rookies, is a very rare exception. When I did some research on this, I noticed that in 1989, Donruss released uh, the base set, right, which is 660 cards, but they also produced Donruss Baseball's Best, Donruss the Rookies, and Donruss Traded. Now, Donruss Traded is the only year that they made that brand. They didn't make that. And it's it's like one and only time that they've created the Donruss Traded. Deion Sanders is not featured in Donruss Traded. As a matter of fact, out of all four products released by Donruss in 1989, you will only find Deion Sanders in the Rookies uh, set. Therefore, Taking that into consideration, I consider this one to be a true rookie card because he is not in any of the other releases. If he were to have a card inside of the regular Donruss 660 card set, then it would disqualify the rookie's uh, card because he's already featured in a card by Donruss. So these are little ancillary sets that are really kind of like an extension of the regular set. So I went ahead and just considered this one a true rookie card as well. And of course, the same thing goes with the 89 Fleer update. If he would have had a card in the regular Fleer set, then it would have disqualified the update card. But since he's not featured in the, in the regular Fleer set, then the update set gets the thumbs up as a rookie card. And also 89 tops traded. Okay. Great card here. Um, very popular card, uh, probably one of his more popular rookie cards. I did not regard Tiffany's as rookie cards before, but I have since then changed my stance as I made an exception with these in, in my book, because it's one of them things where I consider this more like a, a parallel set because it does parallel the tops traded set in its entirety. Uh, great card. Probably the Tiffany is obviously going to be the most um, expensive of, of all four cards. And let's look at some pop reports. So the, the pop report for Donruss, the rookies, is 410 cards have been graded and 124 of them have received PSA 10s. For the FLIR update, there's 974 total cards graded with 388 of them getting PSA 10s. Tops Traded has 4,328 cards graded, and 1,024 of them have gotten PSA 10s. And also the Tops Tiffany. 518 total cards have been graded, and 194 cards have received PSA 10s. Next up, we're going to be looking at some ancillary sets and kind of properly identify those. We're going to start off here with Star. Now, 
I'm not a big fan of this company, as you well know. As a matter of fact, we see these three cards here. Very, they're, they're nice cards, right? Because they're different. So I, I can see the appeal to that. But I can tell you that for the 89 star futures, he's card number 13, card number 14. And there is none that have been graded by PSA. I don't know if that's on purpose or I, I don't know what the deal is, but there's none in the pop report. The 89 star <clears throat> card number 150 is in the PSA pop report. However, it has very low uh, pop numbers with only 16 cards graded and two of them being PSA 10. So this is another card. I don't know if these are really old numbers. I don't know if this is something that they were grading at first and they stopped, uh, but we're probably gonna see a resurgence of Deion Sanders cards go up. There's probably gonna be a, a, a litany of Deion Sanders rookie cards being sent to PSA. Personally, I don't think they're going to grade very well only because I think PSA is on to the hype and so they're probably going to be pretty stringent on, on the cards that get sent in. And so, yeah, I, these are cards that I don't consider these rookie cards. Uh, just a star company, just period. Um, you know, don't don't make me say it. Don't. All right. Uh, star rookie cards are. A bullshit. A bullshit. A bullshit. A bullshit. But nonetheless, I consider these to be rookie year cards. They were released in Deion Sanders' rookie year, but they, they don't fully qualify for a true rookie card designation. Let's move on. Next up, we're going to be looking at a few more ancillary sets. Uh, we have another 1989 star Albany Yankees. A bullshit? This is considered more of a minor league card, and... Obviously, that does not cut it for a true rookie card designation either. Actually, uh, all of these cards here are, I consider, rookie year cards. 1989 Classic Travel Update Series 2. You know, Classic, this is this is a board game, I believe. Some type of game that, that Classic would have. Uh, classic has never been uh, pr uh, considered... Uh, rookie cards. I don't. I don't believe they were. The the licensing was kind of like hit and miss with them. Some years they did, some years they didn't. So I'm not 100% sure on this one. Nonetheless, uh, it's irrelevant because it it doesn't qualify. It's it's a rookie year card. And then we also have 1989 Pro Cards Albany Yankees. Very nice bright red border on that one. Is also a minor league card. Oddly enough, again, with the star brand, uh, PSA has only graded a total of five, and there's only been one PSA 10 uh, graded. And so I don't know if that's uh, just no interest in grading those cards, or is it because PSA stopped grading those cards? I, I don't know. I couldn't find anything. The Classic has a total of 95 cards graded. 61 of them have been given PSA 10. So that one has a pretty high um, gem rate, right? And then we have the pro cards at uh, 94 total cards have been graded and a 39 of them have been given PSA 10. These cards guys are all over eBay. These cards are now, there's no shortage of these cards. Uh, there's plenty of cards on eBay if you're wanting to pick these up uh, and they're at pretty affordable prices. Moving on, we're going to be looking at some more rookie year cards of Deion Sanders, and we're looking at 89 score Yankees. This isn't. This was created by by uh, Score, which is a legitimate brand in 1989, right? But it is more of a regional card. This this set was kind of created for, I believe, a, a bank because it, it's it's identified as Nat West Bank. So I'm assuming that is uh, a regional issue, and uh, as well as the Albany Yankees All Decade Best, which is a very nice card in my opinion. I really like the the uh, overall design of this card is very nice to me. The '89 Best Albany Yankees also has a, a limited edition platinum uh, card. Uh, it's it's believed that only 1,500 of those sets have been uh, printed, but I I couldn't find any. I don't know what they look like. Um, I'm sure it's somewhat kind of a, like a parallel to, to this card here. But let's look at some pop reports. For the score Yankees, uh, we have a total of nine cards that have been graded. 
and four of them have been given a PSA 10. Also, the all-decade best is three cards have been graded by PSA, and zero have been given a gem in 10. And lastly, the 89 best Albany has a total of 63 cards graded. Only 18 of them have been given PSA 10s. And it's parallel, the Platinum, 11 total cards have been graded, and four of them have been given PSA 10s. Again, all three of these cards you can purchase on eBay today. Uh, no, no shortage of supply for these cards. You will have a hard time with the with the Albany sets because th and this is these are basically like team sets that come in a, in a poly bag, and uh, Dion is card number one, so he sits at the very top. So finding one in top condition may be a little difficult because of that. Uh, but uh, with all that said, I want to give you an honorable mention for baseball. Here I have um, a couple of cards that I want to give honorable mentions, but I call these again post rookie theme because these were released after the fact. These are second year cards of Deion Sanders, but a lot of people might think that the 89 MLB debut is an actual card that was released in his rookie year because all of the marketing for it says 89 MLB debut, but these cards were actually distributed in 1990. It's an it's a ancillary set that Topps released in 1990, and it highlights the players that made their debut in 1989, the previous years. So that, but it's still a, a, a pretty cool card. I, I love the design. I love the image. I love the brand and a really cool card. So to me, it's honorable mention for, for a great second year card. Also, the 1990 Leaf. Uh, this is also Dion's second year card, but you cannot ignore the uh, importance of the Leaf brand in 1990. That was just, it, it, to this day, it's an iconic set, a very important set within the hobby. And Dion Sanders is featured in this set as well. Now, I've heard it said many times that the junk wax era is just that, junk. Uh, and, and it's one of those things where I, I get where you're coming from, but it's one of those things where if, if you grew up in that era and if you grew up in the eighties and nineties, you know what, that, that thing, that stuff is anything but junk. It's actually a very mislabeled era in the hobby. Um, you know, I, I think it would be more respectful to say a mass produced era. I can agree with that. I think that's a little bit more respectful or my personal preference would be the rookie card era because that's exactly what the decade of the 80s and, and partial of the 90s was was the rookie card era there was a rookie card boom that started in 84 and lasted all through the 80s and even into the 90s until insert cards came along in the early 90s and so it, it's one of them things where you know, I, I get that there's there's no rarity, really. Uh, there are some things that are a little rare, but there are some key cards that if you know what you're looking for, um, there there is some key cards that are not as mass produced as others. And also, if it's a question of value, you know, there, the, the, you can get some rookie cards of, uh, of players in, in PSA 10 format that that do bring a good dollar in if that's, if that's your angle, but overall, I tell you what, it's, it's one of my, it is my favorite um, eras. And that is the, the era of the 1980s. The junk wax era is the era that is my favorite. Uh, and, and so it's one of those things where I kind of chuckle because uh, you know, it's all junk, but then at the same time, here comes Deion Sanders and, and the hobby starts getting a little, hey, hey, Deion Sanders cards that, you know, you can probably find in a dollar box or a quarter box now all of a sudden are getting all this attention. And um, we'll see what the, you know, what, what the... We'll see what the outcome is with the Colorado Buffaloes. I know they've started the season pretty well, but I also do know that they got a pretty tough schedule ahead of them the rest of the season. So we'll see how it, um, you know, how it all plays out and how the hype machine kind of takes Deion Sanders cards. I'm looking forward, I guess, is my point to um, the outcome. Well, listen, that's going to be all for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. 
If you like this channel, please consider subscribing. I would love to include you into the community as we continue to look at the past and present day status of the rookie card, all in an effort to better understand this hobby icon. Well, as I like to say, buenos nachos, muchachos, and I will catch you on the next one.